Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Time for the week five edition of SmackDown. And man, do we have an action packed show for you here tonight? As I'm gonna quickly run down the match card as what I think I always do. I probably might have missed the part of me run down the match card. On like some episodes of Zoomer Small, but anyway, here we go. As the first match up here tonight, the one that we're gonna see right now. We got the winner advances for the SmackDown Tag Team Tiles for their own team. So we got Triple H drops in DX between himself and Shawn Michaels. Now, for DX's last matches, which were happened their last two matches, Shawn Michaels have basically done all the work. Of course, with Triple H in the first matchup, abandoned Shawn Michaels, and Shawn Michaels still beat Rhino and Heat Slater once Triple H abandoned him. And then, of course, last week we had Young Bucks take on DX, in which Shawn Michaels did not tag in Triple H at all, and Shawn Michaels pinned, I believe, Nick Jackson. With a pedigree right in front of Triple H's face. So that's a nice storyline to advance to here. But now if, if Triple H could be able to win this matchup. Then of course DX they advance. To this Smackdown Tad Tell thing we're having. Nick Jackson will be representing himself. And the and Matt Jackson as the Young Bucks. And he's there representing himself. And Rhino as his own tag team with Rhino and Heat Slater. So now of course for example. Well, not for example, but whichever man wins this matchup makes their team be inside the SmackDown Tag Team matchup at SmackDown, at SmackDown exclusive pay per view. No Surrender, which of course after ECW's exclusive pay per view. Barely Legal, which of course is going to be the next episode of Universe Mode, probably coming out tomorrow. So, that will basically be it. And so, for example, if. Let's say an unlikely one. Let's say if Heat Slayer wins this matchup, then of course Rhino and Slayer will face off against whoever wins the number one contenders matchup on the week 6 edition of SmackDown, which is next week. And it will be between the Young Bucks and DX. As their two, well, their two members, of course, did not win the matchup. So let's say that's the case. That could be that could be an example. Well, it is an example, but that could either be the case tonight. Of course, if Heat Slayer does win this one, or, you know, blah, 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 stuff like that. You guys get the idea. That took a took a blood that took a way long time to explain. I was gonna say a bloody long time, but no, I'm not British. I wish I was. Um that'd be cool. Anyway. So next matchup, second matchup, of course a matchup that we have had many times here. We got Cesaro and Kobush taking on Smojo and Saffron as Triple H will monsters of like Sandal Pen seats later. Nick Jackson just stood there. Didn't bother break it up. DX they advance further. By events for I mean they got smacked on Tad Tower opportunity and Triple H has proved himself to DX now, especially with Shawn Michaels just doing all the work before. Anyway, going back to the matchup. Of course we had Cesaro and Kalibushi in a to matchup against their own rivals, Samo Drunk and Safrons. We've had this matchup like a good amount of times. It's probably like our third time having this matchup, I believe. Second or third time, but of course, for the first time we had this, we had Cody Bushi pinning Samoa Joe. Of course, Samoa Joe and Cesaro are rivals. Cody Bushi and Safran are rivals. So let's see how it works out here tonight. And so, third matchup, we got Dolph Ziggler taking on Ryback. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in the, in the 12-man Battle Royal for the United States Championship on the last week edition of SmackDown, we did have Dolph Ziggler again eliminated by... I can't remember who it was. I think it was Ryback. I can't remember if it was Ryback or not. I know it wasn't Kevin Owens. I don't know. But, of course, Owens now injured due to Aster Black. Um, well, due to Kevin Owens trying to attack Aster Black on the SmackDown follow from last week. And, of course, Aster Black, the attack that backfired. Um, okay, yeah. Anyway, as I was saying, sorry I got interrupted, which is why there was probably like a quick um, camera cut, I mean voiceover cut or something, I did get interrupted, um, which is why I'm like adding more audio into this, right? Anyway, what was I saying? Anyway, the officer did eliminate Ryback from the barrow, even though Sigler got eliminated before Ryback, but Sigler did drop kick Ryback as Ryback was on the ring apron, which made Ryback... Get eliminated from the ring apron, but not eliminated by anyone actually still in the matchup, but by Dolph Ziggler. Now, of course, Dolph Ziggler is a face. Ryback is a heel, so of course, this was a heel antic by Ziggler, but you know, in week three? Week? F- no, week four. In week four. Uh, no, sorry, week three. Yeah, week three. 
I was right. Um, week three of SmackDown, we did have Dawson versus Ryback in the main event, in which Sigurd did put up a great fight, but in the end, Ryback did win. And after the matchup, Ken Owens did attack Dolph Ziggler. Since, like, the Ken Owens and Dolph Ziggler thing was inside, like, whole time rivalry that was playing ahead. But, of course, you know, stuff happens. Now, of course, you guys all know that these are CPU simulated matches. And all the matches I do are not actually on the actual booking career mode. It's actually on exhibition mode because I do not have the pro license. Um, I am going to probably get the pro license. I don't know, I need permission to use money on this iPhone, so I could get the Pro License, I need permission to do that, I have not gotten permission yet, but let's see, I could probably get Pro License though, <sighs> I swear this is like the second time I've gotten interrupted while recording this, okay, I'm just gonna like keep cutting it out and keep adding new audio clips, which is why there's gonna be like, very short moments of silence, oh my god, guys, I'm, because currently there's like noise happening in the background. So like every time someone comes into my room, I'm just going to like quickly cut out the audio. Because they're going to think I'm talking to myself even though I'm recording this video. And so they're going to say I'm weird and stuff even though I'm not. Yeah. This has become a humongous pain. Anyway, what the hell was I saying? I don't even really know anymore. I really know. Seriously, what I was saying. Anyway, about the Kevin Owens stops everything. I had like the whole Kevin Owens Dolph Ziggler rivalry planned out. Of course, in the exhibition mode, you can't really get injured. Well, you couldn't get injured in the matchup, but of course, it's not going to impact the wrestler throughout more matches and stuff like that. Which is why, of course, if it was on the actual career mode, Kevin Owens will actually be out. And stuff, but this is on exhibition mode where I could set up any amount of weeks that I want Kevin Owens to be out. So. He's not going to come back in time for the pay-per-view. Because I got storyline planned. Of course, I had, I had like a whole Dolph Ziggler. Kevin Owens storyline planned in like a towel matchup. In, in a World Heavy Towel matchup. On SmackDown. On SmackDown Brandon roster. I had like a whole plan of that. I, I literally already had plans up until the No Surrender pay-per-view. For them to like have a matchup. For a title and stuff like that. Along with... Two other men, in which I'm not going to announce, but you guys are going to realize who they are. On the SmackDown Fallout, when SmackDown Jam Manager Jim Cornette actually does announce the, the No Surrender main event. So, yes, you guys will realize. After this episode of SmackDown, when I do the Fallout, which is probably going to be in an hour or two hour differential, since I do not have it record currently at the time, the Fallout. And I already have everything planned down. I have everything planned out, but I do not have the fallout recorded yet. So that'll be in like an hour or two hour differential since I'm just too lazy to redo really fallouts. And the fallouts are like, you know, like under a minute. Smackdown Raw and Easter fallouts are like under a minute. I don't do pay-per-view fallouts. For example, Raw's or the pay-per-view that don't have a fallout. Each though is barely legal pay-per-view, which can be the next episode of, of Humor's Mode. It's not going to have fallout. And Smackdown's not surrender pay-per-view after week six. Of SmackDown is also not gonna have a fallout. Pay views just don't have fallouts because I could develop storylines around SmackDown needs study. Well, of course, I could develop more storylines because I have more quicker time by doing pay per view fallouts. But no, I am not going to do it. Also, I already have like things planned up until the live from the MSG event, which is not pay per view, I guess. Well, it is, but like I won't like treat like 2015 in which where it was like a live from the Dodi Network live event. I'm not gonna be doing a live stream for that though because if I did do it and stuff, I'll have to like have the whole thing pre record so I it could, like quickly jump to the air matchup. Also, because I just don't do live streams. Yeah, anyway, I do have things planned out very, very far. And by very, very far, I just mean up to like after week 8, the whole live from the MSG thing, 2015 Dodi style. Up until that, but for. Upcoming weeks of Raw Smith on ECW after Smith on Snow Surrender preview after week six. So basically at the beginning of week seven. I do not have things planned out. So like for example, Raw's Raw Smith on any ECW week seven and eight. Those both those weeks for those brands. They do not have a set, they do not have a match card. They probably might will be some storylines, but I just don't know who the winners of those matches are going to be. And also, because I don't want to keep resimulating it. Because if I do actually want a winner of a matchup, if I gotta keep resimulating it for all of them, 
and stuff like that, then you know, of course, um, of course, that'll take me forever, especially if the CPU keeps uh, making one person win, or I could get lucky and could pick the first person that I want to win win, of course. For example, the Dolph Ziggler and Ryback matchup on the week three edition of SmackDown, I did want to steer their color Bushi, he gets counted out. Now, this is when we get into an interest part matchup with Steve Rogers, Mojo, big super kick to the back of the head. Rollins, he's proved that he's probably better than Bushi. Because he's just Seth Rollins, he just made his rival Kota Bushi get counted out. Now, of course, I got plans in rivalry wise and how long the links are going to be. For example, the Braun Strowman and Finn Balor rivalry over on East Side, I got plans for that um, a little bit longer. I probably just spoiled it. Well, here's the thing. Spoiler alert, at the Barry League pay view, it's not going to be the end of Rivalry, of course. Because it's just one matchup. It's not even that much of a goal in the matchup. Um, I did not announce what kind of matchup it was going to be. I think, unlike... I, I don't think I have announced any match type for ECW, I think. For the East pay view. Well, of course, you know, regular East Side style, no scorification matchups, but the Finn Bar and Braun Sherman one specifically has a different matchup. I have not said anything about it. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm going to say something about it tomorrow in the pay-per-view talk, which, of course, you know, the whole talk of the pay-per-view before the show actually starts. And that, of course, is a separate video along with the after pay-per-view talk where I, like, review on matches and stuff, which, of course, is a separate video itself from the actual pay-per-view. Anyway. Anyway. Okay, but uh, going back to the Dolph Ziggler, and I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not commenting on the action for this matchup because I, like, always, I'm gonna plan like doing separate videos in which what I do actually talk about what's happening, like what what's storyline's plan and stuff. But uh, it's real, it's really just a bad habit of me like wanting to explain storylines, especially if you guys are new, and especially so you guys want to like make stupid comments saying about oh why is Kevin Owens. Not in your shows or something like that, you know. So, which is why I really kind of, like, keep re-announcing the same stuff. Now, of course, you guys actually do watch the videos and stuff. Which I highly doubt. But, of course, you guys still do. And you know the developing storylines and stuff. Well, at least, especially if you know some of them, that'll still come in handy and stuff. But if you just don't want me to keep repeating the whole storylines for, like, each episode of Rossmet or Frostmet on Easter. Like, for example, I'll keep explaining why we got John Cena and Chris Hero rivalry over here on SmackDown. And of how I would say, oh, because Chris Hero wants to prove this to John Cena and something like that. Which two fairs actually think. But, you, you know, I keep explaining that for like every week SmackDown. And that rivalry has been, like, it started at like what, week two? Week two, I believe. So, yeah. I see her there. Ron snails the drop kick off the top rope into a pin onto Cesaro. Can Ron be able to eliminate two people here on the nation? Yes, he does. Now, of course, this was a regular tag team match, but this was not originally an elimination tag match. It wasn't. But, you know, with Kota Bushi getting counted out, um, that's what made it happen. So, Rollins, he went on a complete wrecking streak. Out, and so, Samoa Joe, he did not eliminate anyone. Rollins eliminated his own rival, Kota Bushi, and Seth Rollins, of course, actually eliminated Samoa Joe's rival, Cesaro. So, of course, we had Kota Bushi pin Samoa Joe on the first time these guys had a tag team match against the chair. So for this one, we have Rollins eliminating Kota Bushi by making him get count out, count out, and of course we got Rollins eliminating Cesaro, which kind of shows of how much of a big time qualifier for a championship Rollins is. Of course, you know with the whole now, not to mention of how many rivalries ever got set up for SmackDown. I think I got like a total of four rivalries. You know, rivalries that involve backstage attacks. Um, segments that want to prove stuff, you know, follow episodes and stuff. So, of course, my original plans for Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens was to make them have a tag team matchup. Now, of course, I got two armen that were supposed to be involved in that, in a fail forward matchup for the World Trade Tower at No Surrender. I ever had plans for that. Well, I had, well, I originally had Kevin Owens versus Dolph Ziggler plans, but of course, you know, with, you know, with what happened in the Battle Royal, which I'm not going to spoil it for you, I did explain what kind of did happen. But, Nick didn't really explain right now. But anyway, what happened in the Battle Royale was supposed to develop further. With not only Kevin Owens and Officer having their own rivalry for the War Hotel. Once it was announced by Jim Cornette, because of course SmackDown, they currently don't have no champions. 
Well, who was Tanahashi? He is your nicely champion currently. We already had that sold out in the battle royal. But we are, but anything else but that, everything else is not really sold out championship wise, except for the nicely championship with with um Hiroshi Tanahashi having the nicely style. And with whoever winning the fail forward matchup tonight in the main event, I being Kyushuka, Kyle Austin Aries, Pete Dunn, or Jim Hall will face off against him at no surrender. Just so we could, like, you know, not get a fifth rivalry and just want to get more of a number one contender stick. Now, for Samantha, we got John Cena taking on John Cena. The ones I announced first are the good guys, aka the faces. The ones I announced last are the heels, aka the bad guys. So, John Cena and Chris Hero, Cody Bush and Seth Rollins, Cesaro and Samoa Joe. And Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens originally, and then it turned into like a whole um, um, fail four right thing with two arc pairs. I'm not gonna say, but you guys will realize who were they were supposed to be once on the SmackDown Fallout, and of course, you know, I have plans for that as well. I plan ahead, and so that's how I like um, changes and stuff. And well, I guess now it's gonna be um, a different story now with Owens out of the picture. But now, of course, I, c- I have the vep in the store now with Astro Black attacking Kevin Owens backstage. Well, Kevin Owens trying to attack Astro Black backstage. Then Black retaliating and him smashing Owens through gas, which makes um, Kevin Owens injured, has injured ribs and stuff like that. Which now makes me develop into a different style storyline, but I do have plans for Owens in the future. But I don't have, like, set up or anything like that in pay-per-view or date-wise. But a specific event that's probably a little bit far away and stuff like that. I don't know. Or I could make it happen a little bit early. And of course, I'm just going to announce the other matchup we're going to have, at, which is next after this. The number one contenders fail for a matchup for the nicest championship. That's going to be in the main event. Next matchup, Bray Wyatt versus Aster Black. That should be an eerie matchup. Anyway. So I'm going to go back to the action. I had no idea how long that took me to explain all these storylines and stuff. I really do apologize if I got you guys getting bored and stuff. Anyway, time to call the action. Sirdar Sickler. He nails a Shun Star Press. I was about to say Moon Star for a second, but no. Shun Star Press. I believe he fell through a steel. St- uh, blah. I believe he fell through a steel step. Sirdar to kick up and the show off is on fire. Ryback. Right He's struggling here. Now, of course, this looks different. Of course, Ryback right showing the impressive showing against Dolph Ziggler. The week three edition of SmackDown. Now Ziggler, he is retaliating here. He's really being more impressive than Ryback. Now, of course, Ziggler was impressive by having the resiliency to kick out and get out submissions multiple times against Ryback, especially since like Ryback absolutely demolished him throughout the matchup. And Ziggler didn't really get in. Well, he got in a good amount of offense, but Ryback got in. I would say seventy percent of the offense. Ziggler got about thirty percent or sixty to forty percent, in which where Ryback did have the amount of offense longer. And did more power moves than Ziggler, but Ziggler was, he did have a whole lot of resiliency to like kick out, break out submission stuff, get rope breaks, and just be able to just, you know, fight back against Officer. I mean, Officer be able to fight against Officer. Wow. Um, Officer, bleh, I can't talk. Officer to be able to fight off and fight back against Ryback. We three edition Smack enough for this one. We're getting like a different side of Ziggler here, in which we've got Ziggler taking the role against Ryback. See right there, Ryback he takes Ziggler down to the ring apron, and now the big guy, Ryback, he's gonna try to get some momentum now. Let's see right there. Ziggler's gonna shove him down, and Ryback just gonna simply kick Ziggler in like the knee or shin, and Ziggler takes a nasty fall, like stomach first to the outside. And now they shouldn't have a leaf. Ryback, he's angry now at the big guy. Is hungry and he's gonna hunt and steer there. Ziggler doesn't care. The show off of a clothesline straight out of the gate. Trying to do her crown probably. And as uh, the there, no. Gorilla press slam by Ryback. Ryback, of course, has more strength. He's a brawler. Ziggler's somewhat of a technician and, and I'll get a high flyer. He does have great LF ability, but not really that much of a high flyer compared to, like, you know, Sin- the Sin Caras, the Rey Mysterios, and stuff like that. Sierra there's Ziggler on count of seven, while Ryback, he's on count of six. Ryback's gonna get back to the ring. Imagine Sierra gets counted out here. On count of eight, that'll be heartbreaking right here. If Dr. Sierra has come so close, but yet so far, on count of nine, can Ryback be able to win this? No. Ziggler gets back inside the ring. Now Dolph Ziggler just trying to fight back. Now this is looking more like week three. With Ryback just simply kicking down Ziggler. Ziggler is simply fine. Now Ziggler, he has Frog Smash down Ziggler. He's not going to give up seeing like in the week three edition of SmackDown. In which Ziggler, he just 
just didn't give up here. Sierra so there nails the kick up to the back the head of Ryback. Nice move from Ziggler now. Ryback tasting his own blood. His blood, well, it's not necessarily down his mouth, but his blood are down. The blood of his is now down into his eyes. Here comes Dolph Ziggler going to jump on top of Misses the close line, and that is now crucial. Give Ryback a little bit of offense. He's going to be able to capitalize, but now with a submission, that's a clear rope break. And uh, I think that's a crucial point to match up for Ryback now. As much as it's probably very difficult to say that, Sierra there's Ziggler nails the close line. Off top rope is the rope break, though. What if you didn't call it a rope break, though? Ryback just kicked out after like one second. Should have been a rope break. But no, it's not necessarily a one count, but not being called for a rope break, but also not being called for one count. Sierra nails the close line from the back to head, the leaping close line for Ziggler. That can knock Ryback out cold, and yes, it does. Ryback has actually been knocked out cold for three seconds as Dobster picks up the victory. Impressive showing from the show off. As we now go into, well, I'm about to be an impressive striking performance from Aster Black, to say the least. Of course, this man, greatly high talented. Now, of course, we could change his name to Tommy End, which is what his independent name in the indie circuit was, like PWG and stuff like that. We could change it back to Tommy End, but I actually really like Aster Black. As a better name, of course, Aster Black. Great superstar currently in NXT. But now, imagine this matchup in real life, though. They, if Aster Black ever gets caught up to the main roster, imagine this matchup. That'd be great. Imagine Aster Black and the Wyatt family. Of course, I've seen some numerous modes having Aster Black in our sanity or the Wyatt family. I'm lying. The Sandy one, I, I've kind of lied. I haven't seen any original about that one yet. But, as the Black and White family? Yep, have seen some of modes with that. Not gonna lie. I like the idea. See right there, as the Black, he's gonna miss the moon size. Now, Bray White. Now, of course, the White family, they are split. Up. Um, Eric Rowan and Luke Harper and Braun Strowman, they're over in East Delia, but of course, Strowman has his own thing going on. Um, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan, they did lose in the first matchup, the first ever matchup on ECW, as it was against Abyss and Matt Morgan, and it was for the Hardcore Tag Team Championships. And they did lose the matchup, and they have not made an appearance since, I believe. So, they're a little bit down in the drains. Of course, Braun Strowman, he's going to have a blood feud with Finn Balor. That's going to stretch further and over, barely legal. So, of course, whoever wants the matchup, that's not going to be the end of the rivalry, to be fair. It really is not going to be the end of the rivalry. I have plans for that. I can't spoil it for you, but whatever. But whatever, because you guys are not going to know any match types or any of our further storylines. You guys will just know that it's going to continue. Anyway, going and focusing our attention back to SmackDown. See right now, Bray Wyatt with a fair of strikes. And now Aster Black, his striking combo. Multiple striking combos and multiple kick combos that he caused to pull off. As well, of course, greatly high tanned. The rest of the they're probably going to do some sort of daily maneuver, of course. On to the ladder to Bray Wyatt, but why he's going to counter Spine Buster C right there, and Aster Black. Back suplex power bomb, only a one count surprise, and I at least thought that was going to be a two. Aster Black having the momentum here. Kick straight to the back of Bray Wyatt, C right there, German suplex into a roll up. Nicely done by Black, and that will pick up the victory. Bray Wyatt has to be frustrated. Most definitely, because he did get eliminated as the other Nerd German Suplex, just good measure after the matchup from Master Black. Bray White did get eliminated from the Battle Royal, I believe. Was Bray White in the Battle Royal? Yeah, he was. Wish White had this matchup set up, right? I forgot. <laughs> so, yeah. That was impressive shown from Master Black. Of course, a great striking combo between those two men. They did have like a little bit of a strike fest on top of the ladder. Well, on top of the broken ladder for a while, which was actually kind of cool. I really like that. Anyway, here we go. Your main event, which is, um, if you check the time right now in the video, so it won't be spoiled for you. And so you guys won't say, oh, why are you telling me the length of the time, blah, 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 whatever, live for it. Um, 10 minute matchup. Well, 9 minutes and 59 second matchup, but technically, you know, 10 minutes because YouTube will probably add in one or two more seconds also. So that's the full gallery. Wants his shows and stuff like that. Anyway, the wrong contenders matchup fail for a matchup for the United States Championship. I to see who becomes the wrong contender for the United States Championship. Kashuska Kata, Austin Aries, Pete Dunn, and Jinder Mahal. Those four specifically have been picked out as they were in the Battle Royal. And now, of course, the last two men who were in the Battle Royal, who were in the 12th man Battle Royal for the United States Championship last week on the week 
for edition of SmackDown. It actually was the two only Japanese wrestlers, like the two only wrestlers from New Japan Pro Wrestling. And that was Kashusuke Kai and Hiroshi Tanahashi, epically enough. And they had like a little bit of a short bout. Um, it didn't last quickly as Hiroshi Tanahashi. He did quickly eliminate Kashusuke Kai, which actually was kind of surprising to me. I thought Kai was going to probably win. But anyway, yep, that's how that match happened. Well, that's how like the whole tournament battle happened. Of course, Hiroshi Tanahashi, United States Champion, heading into the No Surrender Pay-Per-View. Which, of course, is after the week 6 edition of Raw, East OU, and SmackDown. Of course, SmackDown, the last episode on the week. Raw, the first one. Of course, East OU is in the middle. And, of course, and I'm actually going to add in another show that's going to be interpromotional between SmackDown, and East OU, and Raw. I'm not going to say the name of it. I'm not going to even say the color is going to be represented by. Of course, East OU is represented by black or purple, I guess you would say. SmackDown, of course, represented in blue. Raw, of course, represents red. I don't really know where East Day represents gray, black, purple. I don't know. Probably black. Where? Um, I, I really don't know. And our show, I'm not going to see the card that's going to represent. You know, Pacific brand colors just to make it like more colorful and stuff. Just make it more cooler, I guess. So. Yeah, I was, I was going to say something else. Never mind. Anyway, time to go into the matchup now. As you see right there, mobile submission being made. Half of the crab by Pete Dunn. Also, with Okada doing the arm bar straight to Jim Mahal now. Can I say this? Can he steal victory? Can he be able to defeat Pete Dunn here? No, he will not. But of course, he won't because if you guys remember the time, 10 minutes and pass by fast. Jim Mahal nails spear or a takedown style move on to Pete Dunn and Seer they're awesome there's Nails is leaping DT right into the extinguisher I believe I, I, I don't know I didn't get a chance to fully see it I, I also don't remember what happened in the row I didn't get a chance to fully see it I was paying attention I was I was paying attention to what was happening on the upper part of the screen oh, Kyle he did take a nasty bump though I see right there Austin Aries he's probably the most moment, momentum driven man as he has probably did most likely the most damage against and the other man is here. There, Pete Dunn nails the drop kick on the side of the screen. You got Pete Dunn, Jim Mahal. They're facing out against the chair. Now, Okada. Now, this is going to be like for five seconds. Will Okada just stand in here? I remember this part. And spoiler Okada is not going to jump off the top rope. He's not. Bingo. There you go. Going back into this match. I was see right there. He's going to try to do a drop kick at that. But no, nope. nails spin fist. Spin punch, discus form. Where he won't call it. Straight to bad head of Jim Mahal to break up the, the whole cam clutch. Smash move he had on Pete Dunn, if I remember correctly. My bad, I really am not paying attention as much. as much, Because I got like a whole voice audio bar here. And it's blocking out basically like, I don't know, 40% of the screen. Which is annoying. Okada now. He almost stole the victory against Austin Aries. I see her there. Jim Hall not going to use the flaming table. Well, until now. And no. Pete Dunn from Monitor. Of course, Pete Dunn, probably the most dangerous man in this matchup. Great striking belly. Imagine a matchup between him and Pete Dunn. I mean, oh my god. So many bloopers. So many botches. Oh my god. So many botches in this matchup with, with how I'm talking here. Um, no. Not Pete Dunn against Pete Dunn. Imagine the great striking contest between Pete Dunn and Aster Black here. Um, of course, it could be in SmackDown. Well, no, it could be in SmackDown. It is going to be in SmackDown if we do ever do have the matchup. Which, now that I think about it, we probably could. We probably are. That's going to be highly anticipated, I bet. Now, of course, um, I do know. I am aware that this is a bad Pete Dunn. Now, of course, I like the bear, like, two, three years ago. When Book Revolution gave you the freedom to like choose any career mode you wanted for any brand, I see it there. Whoa, you mug explosion! Every man has probably died. Look at Pete Dunn on the side. Half his head is being covered up by the other side of the screen, which is basically where Steel Guardrail slash Barricade is located. Jim Hall probably dead as well. I'm kidding. And now I see right here, Pete Dunn, he's playing possum. And he falls back dead. Okay, Jim Hall, he came back from the dead. Pete Dunn is also back from the dead. Anyway, so, uh, the new update, well, n not the new update, but, like, where they changed to Brooklyn Revolution in the whole career mode thing, where you now can only play with Federation Online, 
of course, unless you had a pro license. I like the bear back then where you didn't need to have a pro license, just so you could use like any brand you wanted. Of course, with the exception, of course, with the exception of wrestling school in Hollywood. But I did actually, I forgot how you do some in the book promotion career mode to run over wrestling school. I I forgot what you do for that. I've got there was like some specifically you had to do like quit a career mode while you're creating a character or something like that I can't fully remember anymore. I don't think it still works though. Anyway, I like I like that bear. I like the bear. And of course, like I said, I don't have pro lessons. Now this is probably the initial attire. Now of course it also has the initial move set that I have for Pete done. It's just the face scan. The way the face looks, I couldn't find a good face smile on Federation Online, and I tried yet William Regal, but of course I probably do have plans to have William Regal in the Zoomers mode in the future. I like someone with a similar face to William Regal, but in but Adam Bradbury in Federation Online, I did use him to create someone else that's not debuted in Zoomers mode yet, but it is anyway. Going back to the action, here's a seared there, uh, snares, nail snap, suplex, and German Hall counters with. Um, a backwards snap mirror, see right there, Kyle, I can't make Pete Dunn tap out here, it's Dunn gonna tap out to the figure four, was see right there, Mahal, he could tap out to the hurt so, and ah, sounded gibberish, I just taught complete gibberish, aka nothing, this, this is not, this is not some really good voice over here, I know this is gonna be like, 34 minute lengthy video, see right there, nice small package, counter, by your Mahal now, counter, Two all scenarios. That was an even better count. Both men get one count each. They even had their little time match up here. Same like with Kyle and Pete Dunn. Because you just got Kyle and Pete Dunn in the one-one matchup. That'll be hard hit as well. Uh, scenarios, Pete Dunn. That'll be great. Pete Dunn versus Jim Hall. That's also great. Yay, we're having three for one special here. One course, the one-one matchup side of it will be way better. But still, as soon as Pete Dunn nails the power bomb out to Jim Mahal, lands him on top of Austin Aries, a Kyle oh, to be breaking up there. Nails the DET as soon as Mahal is going to try to pin Aries, and Aries, he's going to break up the count. What a matchup this has been. Nice bulldog from Austin Aries, a double, the greatest man to ever live. Austin Aries, imagine if he becomes the greatest man to ever hold the United States Championship. Of course, if he does defeat Hiroshi Tanahashi. At the nose run period, and of course, that's even if he can win this matchup. Imagine if Jim Hall wins the United States title, of course, if he wins this number contenders matchup as well. There's a whole lot of ifs, and of course, we could have different outcomes. We really could. We could have the greatest United States champion of all time. We could have a Japanese United States champion. We could have a Punjabi United States champion. We could have a great bruiserweight UK champion, which sounds cool as hell. Of course, Pete Dunne, he is cruiserweight size. He is 205 pounds, so that counts as Siri right there. Frog Splash from Austin Aries. Nails as Siri right there now. A nightstick. Just pressing against the face of Kyle from that camel clutch. Austin Aries, he just had a great moment right there. This is a hell of a matchup here. And I'm thinking, I'm starting to think that this could be match of the year candidate. Well, at least match of the season, since we're not going like, to do this a whole year. Siri, they're both men with camel clutch in each. Pete down one, Okada. Jim Mahal. Again, one from Austin Aries with Nightstick being be pressed against space as Lace Jim. There we go. Austin Aries, the greatest man ever to live. A double has won the number one contenders matchup. So, Lace Jim is now official. Austin Aries will take on the Rush Tanahashi at the No Surrender pay per view. So, that's going to be for sure a great uh, matchup. So, let's see if Aries could become the most greatest, nicest champion. Of all time to ever live. Anyway, that was it for week 5 edition of SmackDown. Of course, that was a full episode. Um, I'm going to explain to us why I've deleted some of my old videos. And stuff like that. In like a different episode in the future. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And see you on the um, ECW Barry Legal pay-per-view talk. Then the actual pay-per-view. And then the after show talk for pay-per-view. And then, of course, the week 6 edition of Raw. And so on, so on, so forth. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Bye.